Hi guys, welcome to Life Pro. My name is Wamboi Muiroje and today we are going to be talking about being young and Christian. Um, like I know or rather I feel like being a Christian and following Christ may look different for people in different age groups. And so we want to talk about being young and Christian, the challenges with that, the best parts about that. And today I have a few people with me um, to help us discuss this topic and I'm going to let them introduce themselves from left. Um, so my name is Brenda Wanjera. I'm a student in the University of Nairobi and I'm doing education and yeah, and I'm a Christian. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Catherine and Jerry Mitchell. Uh, I'm not from Kenya, I'm from the US, so I went to school, to university, just one or two years ago. Uh, I went to a university called the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, but today I work at Uhuru Girls High School in Tigoni, so I spend all my days with teenagers and I do discipleship there, so trying to prepare them for these days when they're in college or university. Um, as a believer and I love Jesus so much and am yeah, proud to call myself a follower of him. My name is Joan Kongo and I am a student at St. Paul's University. I am pursuing community development and I'm also a believer and a disciple of Christ. Um, guys, as I said, my name is Wamboi Mwishoshe. I'm a student too at Moseno University and I also absolutely love Jesus and aim to be more and more like him with each passing day. And so guys, being young and Christian, um, I think it's very interesting that the three of us at least are university students and I feel like that's one of the hardest stages, like it's difficult to or not impossible, but it's hard to get through campus and still keep your faith, you know? And so we want to talk about how we can go through campus and still keep our faith, given that this is a point in your life when you experience freedom for the first time and there's so much going on and you're starting to build your identity and recreate yourself so how can we go through campus and still keep with the faith i'll speak as the elder <laughs> first um so honestly i think for me going through university when i look back two things stand out one my foundation and that is um that i knew jesus and so even even the Bible says temptations are going to come, yeah? And so you have to be strong in your foundation. Um, but when your foundation feels like it's getting shaky, community is, is where I, I found my uh, place of, as you say, getting through campus, still being a believer. Because while our faith is our own, Joanne can't have faith for me, Brenda can't have faith for me, but God did not intend to us for us to do this alone and so he gives us a amazing gift of community and so that is what held me up on the days when I felt like I was falling off um, was my community to just speak truth to me to hold me accountable and just to love me well to be Jesus to me yeah yeah I also think community is really important in speaking for myself um, in Maseno um, that is something I was really praying about in going to campus, like, God, please give me community. Um, and he was faithful to provide that. And these are the people who keep me accountable. These are the people I think about when I'm about to make a decision and I'm like, would I do this with Brenda or Joanne? And yeah, I think community has really been a big part in helping me keep 
their faith even in my campus days um so Brenda and Joan how what role has your community one do you have a christian community in your university or in your life right now as a campus student and how have they impacted your christian life um so before i i i add on the community part so i'll add first on the foundation part with what she said like sometimes when you remember what you've been taught and what they've told you you can't do this so when you're about to do something wrong you're, you're like this is not what i was taught so i think foundation and where you come from is also contributes to your christian life in university um on the community side um for the few months i've been in school like let's say four, four months right so the four months i've been in school i've seen different people and i'm not really sure about the community side because um some things i see people doing that are people from the place that i called christian part also they're like um i know in this community i'm still praying to have a community a christian community in school yeah um i think also before i talk about community i'd say for me christianity has been um foundation one but two intentionality because as much as i believe christ died on the cross and gave us uh grace and freedom i still believe there is a place for human responsibility and effort and being accountable to people but most importantly being intentional about your faith because you might have made a decision to accept christ to be your personal savior but you are not intentional about it mm -hmm. so you keep uh, going back to zero because you are just making the decision for the sake there is no discipline there is no consistency in your prayer life because i think for some things it's not like i'm going to come and force you to read the the bible yeah like i feel like it takes personal uh, decision and intentionality to actually follow that on community i think i'll speak on church community my church uh my church community for me has been a place of truth it's been a place where i would say uh people who really want to know your scars and not just the bright part of you that they see they don't settle for you like to pray and you like to read the bible they want to know what has made you become who you are to this point today and i love that about about them Beth, if I can add something to that, uh, you know, we can say community and sometimes when you think university, it's like your friends you hang out with and, and as Joanne's saying about knowing your scars, I heard a quote the other day from a sermon and they said, if you're 99% known, you're unknown. Meaning if there's that 1% that they don't know about you, then you're still unknown. Now, praise God, he knows everything about us, and that's where we run to first. But also in our lives, in university especially, there are so many temptations, as you started with, and there, there are things that want to draw us, even things that seem like truth that aren't truth, um, that want to draw us away. And that's why what Joanne's saying is so important, to not just settle for, oh, we go to Bible study together, and then we go home. No, you need to be known by people, um, and that means fully known. Guys, we are going to take a short break, but we are going to be back shortly with more about being young and Christian. Welcome back. Um, we are still continuing with our discussion on being young and Christian. And before we left for the break, um, there's something that, Joan talked about and Catherine also highlighted about like being known the fact that it's not just having community that you go to Bible study with but having people who actually know you and who can keep you accountable and it's hard to be in a community with this group of people and be accountable with everyone so Brenda, how do you go about establishing these personal relationships within your community, finding that one 
or that who, who can really keep you accountable? Um, one thing about someone who should keep you accountable, it can just be anyone. Like you can just say, because this one here is my friend, she's going to be someone who's going to be accountable. <laughs> so um, I think someone who should be accountable for what you're going to be doing and everything is someone who is like already established in Christianity, you get. So you can just go outside and meet someone and you're like, um, this one is going to be in my community. So um, community first, people who are already established in the word and people who um, are discipling others at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that um, it's important to keep both sides in mind. One, we're all broken people, and so you're never going to find a perfect person to hold you accountable. Um, and you don't want that because you want to do life together. So you want them to be open to you and sharing sharing their um, dark secrets with you as well. But I also think at the same time, as Brenda has said, you need to be very mindful of who you're asking to hold you accountable because they need to be bold. They need to be able to speak into your life when you screw up. They need to be able to say, not shy away from saying something, and they need to have the truth. Um, if you don't know the truth already, then you can't uh, figure out what is what is okay, what isn't. Maybe Brenda's doing something and they're not so sure, they feel like maybe it's wrong, but you need someone who, who knows and again is bold to speak into that. So. Mm -hmm. I think like finding someone is one very important and my experience especially in school has been like quite difficult I must mm -hmm. say because like when I'm not in school I have someone who is intentionally discipling me but when I go to school and I want someone who is there in my community it, it it's at times like as Brenda said, I'm looking for someone who will be able to call out sin in my life. And so I've had incidents where I've been like, okay, maybe this is someone I can do life with. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I'm like, maybe not, because maybe some things they believe isn't truth to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think it's definitely something to be... Um, very wise about uh, given that this is someone who is playing a very big role in your life and yeah definitely pray about it because yeah and I think you bring up a good point of I don't want people watching to walk away feeling like they have a thousand things they need to do but for me I do think it's different to have an accountability partner if you want to call it that a sparring partner is something I've been told before which is comes from a fighting term. Um, you spar one another to uh, kind of prepare one another for battle, yeah? And so it's different having accountability, partner or friend, and someone who's discipling you. Someone who's discipling you needs to be ahead of you, if that makes sense, in their walk. Um, not to say they're better than you, but just ahead because they're teaching you what it looks like. But accountability I'm not going to be any of your accountability partners because I'm not in your life state, yeah? And so it's important that you kind of distinguish those two as well. Um, I've been telling a lot of people recently, a lot of students, high school students, you can't just look to me because there are things you're never going to tell me because I'm 15 years older than you. Um, so you see me as an adult. Um, just like the three of you, there are things you're never going to tell me because I'm older than you. Um, so it's important to keep those two somewhat distinguished of who's discipling you and who is your accountability person within the community. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, you make a good point of distinguishing between your accountability partner and someone who is discipling you. Um, John, anything to add? Um, I think as we all talk about the accountability partner, I'll go back to you personally. Uh, because you have to be at a point, even in someone discipling you, I think you have to be at a point where you're willing to share 
because I'll not come and tell you this is the way to go and I don't know what you're going through. So I think also as we, where is the place of finding the accountability partner when you're sure you want to do this? Because I feel like you can't just bump into it like I, I think I want to, you know. It has to come from a place of I actually am willing to do it and willingness of course comes with Am I willing to even talk about things I've not talked about before? Or am I willing to open wounds that I've covered before, not healed, covered them before? I feel also as a person, like you have to be at a place where you're willing to actually let someone walk with you through the journey. Mm -hmm. I think let's talk about what she talked of. Where is your heart at? Like there is having community, but before even having community, your personal work with Christ. So what is what are things like as young Christians we should be doing or things that help us to be to grow in our personal work in Christ even as we grow with community. Well for me I think the first the first thing I would say is to ask yourself have you made that personal decision? Because again, we are in a country that is predominantly Christian and everyone you meet says, I'm a Christian. Um, and so to really not just be a cultural Christian, but to really have decided for yourself that you're going to follow Jesus. Because as Joanne's saying about um, being at a point where you're ready to say, I'm willing to let someone hold me accountable. Um, what I was thinking about as she was saying that was you also have to make that first step of deciding that for yourself not mom and dad took me to church or not uh, these are where the the people I hang out with go so I'm going to go to church but to really make that decision because none of the rest of it is going to impact you if you haven't yeah received Jesus for yourself and claimed him as your personal savior and so that's where I would say it has to start um, I'd ask Brenda and Joanne and I'll add a bit myself too, but what are things like that keep you going in your personal work with Christ, like outside of community? Um, for me, one thing that keeps me going is prayer. Because um, when you pray, you're actually talking to God, not that's between you and him and this walk it's not just for you it's not like you wake up and like start walking and you say like i'm a christian i'm doing this so um i i know being a christian when you decide to have jesus in your life is like having him come in and you drop everything else and you start walking in christ so one thing that keeps me going is prayer and another thing that keeps me going is his word. So um, you need to be filled each and every day and you can't just be filled by anything else because this is Christianity, not just anything else. And that's what fills me up is the Bible. Mm -hmm. I think what keeps me going, um, I actually asked myself that question the other day of you know we talk about growth a lot like i want to grow in my spiritual life and my my bible reading and my prayer but what actually makes me want to grow is the fact that i love him and i want to know him you know when you love people and you just want to know uh what did you do when you were 18 and the things you know like i think for me what has kept me wanting to know him more is because i love him i just want to know him because I love him. Mm. I think for me in my community, in school especially, it's, it's mostly students. So it's people who are pouring into me and at the same time I'm pouring into them. Mm -hmm. And so what keeps me going with in my work with Christ is one, I want to know him more. I want to be more like him. But another thing is when I get to this community, am I Am I just pouring out? Am I pouring out out of an abundance of what God has poured into me? Because if God hasn't been pouring anything into me, or I haven't given God a chance to pour into me, then 
there's nothing for me to pour out. I think that's something I really think about even with my personal work with God, like relating it to community. Um, and I think the other thing I'd like to bring out now, when we, we talk about pouring out, yeah, in our communities and also with people who are not in our communities because we are called to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so let's talk about um, sharing, sharing our faith with others around us like what does it look what does it look like for you as a young person what are the challenges in that what what strengthens you in that because it's not like something you just wake up and do so how do you go about sharing um your faith with others and joan i think i'll address that question to you um i think one i would i think for me this is a challenge because i found it i found myself sharing the word with people who it's easy for them to understand like maybe you've read a certain verse and i come and i'm like i have a new revelation of this verse i'm so excited because i know you'll get it and you'll be very excited to hear that revelation but the step of going out to people who actually have not had the word or maybe they they know about god but they don't have a relationship with god i think for me that one i've not gone to that point mm -hmm. but i think um when it comes to sharing the word um for me i've found myself even withdrawing from it for a while to be to get filled up you know like there are times you really Okay, I happen to also do discipleship with Catherine. And there are times you pour out to people daily, constantly. And that doesn't mean that you're becoming empty, but there really are times where you feel like you need to take a step back and actually read books, uh, listen to people, and just let the Lord fill you up again. But when it comes to the place of sharing the word, I think for me, I would say I am guilty of not sharing the gospel with people who don't know Jesus yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think this is a conversation, Manu, I'd like you to be part of because even with Life Probe, that's exactly what you're doing. You're sharing Jesus um, with other people. And so um, if you join us on set and like tell us, like with vlogging and creating all these videos, even these videos you've been creating for the past 100 days, like come and talk to us about what what sharing jesus with others looks for you at this point as a young person as a content creator <gasps> wow thank you for having me here <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think for me uh sharing sharing jesus with with people the first time i actually did that i was working somewhere in town in a particular bookshop and so after work we would go to town just in the streets instead of closing work at six we would close at five then we go just to the streets here in akuru just going and evangelizing in the streets and so first of all the lady we were doing together with that is my manager at work she was the one doing it i was just there <laughs> okay <laughs> i was just there watching and watching and then yeah but but i think even as i was watching her doing it there is something that was actually being uh sparked inside of me and so even as i'm actually doing videos uh, mainly for me when i'm actually doing videos i have two reasons why i'm uh, like two things which actually make me create a particular kind of content even as i create content first of all is actually to inspire people and the other thing actually the main thing is for people to get to know christ and so for me my tool and my channel of making people know more about Christ and know more about God is actually creating content. And so for me I think that's how that, that that's how I actually share Christ to the world. At some time okay, apart from making videos, uh, I don't know if yeah, I think sometimes I'm also guilty of not sharing Christ with people that I don't know. But I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still trusting God for more grace so that I can also be able to approach other people. Yeah, yeah thank you for sharing that. Yeah. 
And I think he brings up a good point of, while yes, we are called to go and make disciples um, to the ends of the earth. And so at times that looks like literally going to the ends of the earth, um, being called to a different place in your life, physical place. Um, but I also think that God gifts us and he's gifted you, Manu, with this content creation and these creative skills. And so he, he uses that um, to then give you a platform as a way to, so it doesn't always have to, you know, um, I'm sure the disciples, as they, you know, were fishing, they shared with other fishermen. Um, and so it, it wasn't always just that, you know, you have to go and in front of a random group of strangers and share in order to make disciples. It's sharing in your day-to-day -day life. Like he has, he has given us all um, purposes in our life. And it's not like disciple making is on one side and your purpose, your work is on the other. It's meant to all be woven together, yeah. I think I like what you said about um, sharing Christ in our day-to-day -day lives, like even with what we do. And especially as young people, I've had testimonies of people just giving their lives to Christ because they saw how someone else was living and why do you do this? Why do you? And that led people to Christ. And I think, yeah, that's very powerful in that it's not just one day there's a crusade, I'm a, I sit down with them and I'm like, I want to preach. <laughs> but also, like, in how we are living, how we talk, how we do all those things. Brenda? Um, for me, I'll talk about the challenges part. So um, sometimes you want to share something with someone, but when you're about when I'm about to, I'm like, is it the right thing to tell the person? Like you don't some people you don't know what they're going through, and you're like, if I tell him this or her, is he or she going to question what I just said? You get, and sometimes um, talking to people you don't know is kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so that's the challenging part for me. <laughs> if I can speak into that one and just say that one of the things that God has really taught me is that when I open my mouth to speak Jesus to you all or to I know very well or to a stranger or to someone I kind of know or I'm getting to know like it's the Lord speaking. Um, and, and so before we even start about talking about speaking, I think we must talk about praying. And if you look through the Bible of any movements, if you look through church history of any movements, it started with prayer. And so we need to be on our knees praying for our non-believing friends or our friends who are right there, but they don't know Jesus just yet. Um, yeah, we need to be praying for them. Um, and we need to be praying I think for ourselves and one another that the Lord gives us the words because Brenda, as an, I hear you on the challenge and I want you to know that even 10 years past university, it's, it's still a challenge to walk up to strangers and even to speak, you know, sometimes the people closest to us are the ones that are hardest to share the gospel with, right? And so the only way it gets easier is that the Lord is moving more um, and what I mean by that is if I were to lean on my own and try to open my mouth and say it's not going to be any easier when you're 10 years older but if if we allow the Lord to speak through us then then he is more than able to use our words that to us make no sense um, in order to share uh, so yeah I would I would encourage you in that and I think about Moses often when I think about this of Moses wanted to say, no, no, not me. Um, don't you know I have a speech impediment? We could insert whatever there. Don't you know that I'm an introvert? Don't you know that, um, I don't know, I don't have time or whatever. Um, but, but, yeah, I shrub. <laughs> <laughs> this person, you know, is, is from a different tribe and they don't, I can't speak their language or whatever. So he still called Moses and he still, you know, led his people with Moses. And so... Each of us are called to to do the same. So, yeah, and I also think maybe to add on to that, 
sometimes sometimes you even don't need to actually talk to someone mm. by them seeing you doing something they that also speaks a lot mm. even more than you going and sharing Christ with someone maybe maybe you are just walking in town and maybe you just like just something happens so maybe just someone comes from nowhere and they knock you off <laughs> you fall down <laughs> like what comes out of your mouth what do you actually speak to that person like people looking at your life are they actually seeing Christ mm-hmm. and so just by your life just by uh, the simple things that we do the, the j- just how we relate with people in our world that itself also is a way of people getting to know Christ just mm-hmm. by watching us yeah yeah mm-hmm. Can I ask a question yeah. to John? Because <laughs> she spoke of, she spoke of um, just something really important of what moves her, what pushes her um, to continue seeking is that she loves the Lord. Yeah. And so, you know, over and over again in Scripture we read, we love because he first loved us. Um, and then they will know we are Christians by our love. So can you speak some, you said you don't share um, or you're guilty of not sharing. But can you speak some to how maybe exactly what Manu's saying of like that love manifesting itself in you um, to show others who Jesus is? Um, I think <laughs> I don't know how I would put it, but I would say even more than even being kind to people. Like people can be something. I know, but <laughs> just um, even the let me talk about conductors in the matatu because I've had something with them. But even getting to the point where really you just choose to be kind, it's not because the person was kind, but you just chose to be kind and even let them get away with it. Like for me, it's been coming to that place of not just about what you share with people but how you respond to situations and not just because we are talking but if today um something happened to me of like a loss of someone close to me would i get to the place of questioning is god still there and you know and even posting on my (laughs) status and facebook of like how god has let me down and okay we're human and we fall short but like getting to really that point of people seeing how do you react to situations as hard as they are how do you react to them i think that can be a place of people Mm. knowing your love for christ and they also desire to know that too Mm. Mm. and that reminds me of someone something someone was telling me um, about carrying the testimony you know Mm. like carrying the testimony as we say, it doesn't have to look like me coming and telling Manu my entire life story, how I give my life to Christ. And that is important, but sometimes it's just in the simple things like, how have you treated that person? And he was telling me of how we are called children of God. We are called sons. Mm-hmm. Um, and how sonship means carrying a family name. And if you're carrying God's family name how how are we as young christians carrying it out there Mm -hmm. is it in a way that is attracting people to the kingdom Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and i think this is a very big conversation that we could go on and on and on but i'd like you guys just share like um final thoughts on being young being christian following jesus um and all that. I'll go. Um, I think we've talked a lot about our personal work and all that. And I think one thing I would love to say as we finish is you never get there. It's not like there's a destination of maybe heaven, but it's not <laughs> like there's a goal and a target you have to hit of have I read the whole Bible since January? Like it's not where we get to, but I always say it's not about the end goal, it's about what you learn during the journey. And that is what keeps you going and fuels you up for tomorrow in the next stage and the next stage. There is no 
you're so born again or you're so Christian or you're so there's never getting there. It's really a daily thing that you have to wake up every morning and choose to go that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um what I would say, um sometimes you wake up and you're like, I don't want to read my Bible. <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to pray right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not about momentum. Like you can't just stop. You keep on going and you keep on trusting him and like John said, there is no end to this. Like you can't see someone and they are so established in the word and you're like, it's, it's over for them. Like they can't keep on reading the Bible. Maybe they've read the Bible like two times, three times and you're like, um, that's the end. We all need to grow and no matter what level you are at, at your work with Christ, we all need to keep on growing. So don't stop. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm a few years past being a youth. And so what I think I would say is, if I knew then what I know now, I would do it all over again, um, as in following Jesus the same way. Um, if anything, I would change. I would just want to know him more and more and more. Um, and so Brenda's right. There are some mornings you wake up and you're like, I just don't want to do this. And there are going to be dark seasons in your life. The enemy is real and he's attacking every day. So there's going to be times where you feel like giving up. Um, but Jesus is always worth it to keep seeking him. Um, and so I think I would leave with just saying Jesus is always more than enough um, in every circumstance and to keep your eyes fixed on him. Uh, storms are going to come, but we keep our eyes fixed on him. And even when we fall into the water, he's there to pull us out. See ya. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think for me what I can say is uh, the way most of the time when people are actually evangelizing and telling us about Christ, they are like, ah, you know, when you receive Christ, your life will be new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so just to, just to say that uh, there, there will be challenges, yeah, challenges will come, and uh, so don't don't get to that point whereby you are receiving challenges, these challenges are coming and then you're like, uh, eh, okay, maybe this Christian, Christianity is not what I, what, uh, hey, what I expected it to be. And so there will be challenges, definitely. But one thing that I normally say, like the difference between a person who is born again and a person who is not born again, both of them actually go through challenges. But now the difference is the person who is born again is together with Christ in these challenges. But now the person who is not born again is actually facing these challenges alone. And so, yeah, I think that's what I can, uh, I'll actually leave all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's funny that you talked about the challenges because I was going to say, um, I was going to speak to the young person who is out there and you're struggling even to make this decision. Do I really want to? follow Christ and tell you that um, even with the challenges that Manu has talked about, following Christ is a beautiful thing. Um, if you ask me, my personal testimony, it is the best thing that has ever happened. And as much as there are challenges, he's faithful to take you through. And just reaching out to someone who is out there and you're struggling to make that decision. When I gave my life to Christ, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was like, but then he grows you. Just make that decision. Maybe Faith, since you said that, you could just give your 30 second gospel to them. Like maybe there's someone who doesn't know. So just to encourage you to um, allow Christ into your life, um, surrender to his will over your life, um, to believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. He, he came and died for our sins and he he loves you so much uh, wherever you are at um, it doesn't matter what you've done um, he came to 
give us a new life in him and today christ is calling you into that new life and he's knocking at the door of your heart and my urge to you is that you'd let him in accept him as your personal savior and strive to live a life that is worthy of your calling and yeah so yeah cool cool and guys um now that we are sharing the gospel um you can participate in sharing the gospel by sharing this video with your friends and <laughs> giving us a thumbs up and subscribe to life probe and keep this conversation going tell us in the comment section below what it's like for you to be young <laughs> and christian and the challenges you're facing um reach out to someone share the gospel and yeah for us at life probe today it's Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>